Anyway, uh, you see that Trinidad my auger fight? I thought my auger would have done better, but he got destroyed. It reminded me of the debate Thursday night. Come on, George. <laughs> the only thing missing was Donald Trump coming out and going, George, this was your chance to show you could lead the team. You didn't do it. <laughs> Don't say it, Mr. Trump. Don't say it, Mr. Trump. <laughs> George Bush, you fired. Uh, Billy Joel got married. A happy couple say goodbye to their guests, then they drove into a tree. Uh, <laughs> Come on, that crazy bastard is always doing benefits for the environment. Meanwhile, he's killed more trees, you know? <laughs> Thank God he doesn't live in Brazil. There'd be no rainforest. He's a one-man deforestation company. He shouldn't be allowed out of the house on Arbor Day. I'm serious. All right, in court documents just released, Kobe Bryant said he knew the girl wanted to have sex with him because she gave him those eyes, even though she never gave him, quote, oral consent. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. It wasn't oral consent that was the problem. From what I understand, it was the... It was the anal consent. Was that the... A U.S. district judge called unconstitutional the portrait of the portion of the Patriot Act that allowed the government to conduct secret searches of people's internet activity and telephone records. Now, I don't know how the rest of you feel about this, but it's disgusting. That's like, they can't wiretap only because people, what? I was, you know, I, I, I didn't want to interrupt your thoughts, so I put my finger up to let you know I had a thought coming, but I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> but I like the fact that I do this and he shuts his stupid face. <laughs> what were we gonna say, dummy? Um, just that I actually, I kind of agree with the judge because I don't want to see the government. <laughs> I just wanted to see if it worked for black people. That's <laughs> oh, I was just, I was afraid it was a gun. <laughs> um, no, I didn't, I don't want to see the uh, government have sweeping power just to not have to justify why they're making certain searches. Unless you do something suspicious. But they already do do that, only it's, they were just updating it so it was computer. I'm only saying that, that as long as they have to, I'm if not, you say sweeping power again, I'll punch it right well, in Well, I was going to say you can't make, as long as the person does something suspicious, like they're an Arab. Okay, that's acceptable. Right. <laughs> well, that's about, you're always, you're always defending the Patriot Act. Yeah. But it's like, have you read, the, I mean, there's stuff in I there. I have read There's it. stuff in there that's, like, you know, it's now legal for the FBI to shoot Arabs. Did you know that? It's in there. It's true. Well, he said Arab, you shouldn't have said the punchline of that. I know, but that's, but that's all I have. It's also oh. in the Bible. <laughs> you should have said Muslims. <laughs> I should have said Muslims. Now, that's or, a little too real. You know, that's, you don't, uh, it's... Let's not yeah. critique Greg's joke anymore. I wasn't. I was critiquing your, your critique of Greg's joke. I liked his joke. I didn't like your critique of it. Hi, Lynn. How you doing? Sorry. Hi, Colin. Good to be here. What do you think? Um, I think that if it, if it looks like there's a reason to search, they should, like, if it says, like Jim said, if it says Osama, what's up, or something, they should be able to look at the... Well, they're not. I mean, it's go, the reason, one of the things about 9-11 was that 20th hijack or whatever, Zacharias Musawi, they couldn't go on to, into his website or whatever it was because of exactly this. That's what a patriotic cha change I mean, but if you, I mean, if you are a terrorist, I mean, if you Arab, we should be able to go on your stuff. When the Black Panther Party was out, they went in all their stuff. We should be able to go on there. Yo, stuff. they did Fred Hampton. Why they had to do they Fred Hampton like that? Yo, why they do Fred Hampton? They went into their phone records Yo, they assassinated and went into their him. files and walked in and just abused them. Exactly. Whatever. The problem is you're giving the FBI exclusive authority. You know, you're, they, they, there's no judicial oversight. There's no chance. There there's is no judicial chance. oversight. Not, not, not with this new provision. Stuff? No, 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 no. No, the yeah. FBI, the FBI is authorized just with a letter by sending one of these letters. They, they could require anyone to give all their records over, and there's no, there's no judicial oversight at all. No, no. And, and the, people aren't, the people who are being asked to give the records aren't even allowed to say that they've had to give the records over. But they still have to get a, a judge. It's still a warrant, a warrant situation. They still have to get a warrant. You don't need any kind of judge. That's what changed. That's what's extreme about it. You don't need a warrant. You just, it's a, it's a, there's a, it's a, a, I forget what it's called, a letter of uh, something or other. Well, from who? Of, of record request. Who's the letter from? From the FBI. The FBI. A, now, look, all I'm saying is they, they're using it very sweepingly. So that it's like, look, if you find a guy who's about to blow up the world with a nuclear thing. bomb, fine. But they're doing like, they're, 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 they use it to like shut down strip clubs in Vegas and stuff like that. I mean, you know, I can't imagine <laughs> Osama's hanging out at the Boom Boom Room. You know. <laughs> the night before they did 9 11, they were at a titty ball. Ball. They, actually, they actually. The problem, they actually the, problem did. the problem I have with like Ashcroft and doing this kind of stuff is that he's not, to me, he's also involved in going after porn. It's, it's like. Do you mean what he just said? Interesting. Did he say porn? He said strip clubs, stupid. Well, that's not porn, <laughs> old man. <laughs> 
I just they tested Jennifer Crisafulli was fired twice last week, once by Trump, and then from a real estate, a real job as a real estate agent for making anti-Semitic, uh, let me say, quote, anti-Semitic remarks. I want to hear the anti-Semitism in this remark because I don't see it. Here's the clip. What do you think of the decor? It's a little too stressed I'm surprised there's bread in an Asian kind of restaurant. It was those two old Jewish fat ladies. It's really, they were like the pinnacle of the New York jaded old. They were what they were. Jennifer, this is really easy. You're fired. Uh, now, excuse me, he said those two fat, old though. Jewish fat ladies. I know, they weren't fat. But the point is, you can't describe somebody's religion. You can't say they were Jewish. That's offensive. She got fired from a regular job for that. But it's all the stuff That's they cut out. It's all the stuff they cut out. She's like that big beaked, dreidel spinning. <laughs> yeah, cheap bitch. <laughs> She should have gotten fired for being dumb. She shouldn't have said she, that on yeah, camera. Yeah, she doesn't seem like somebody you'd want to defend, but let's be if you're honest. you're going to say something anti-Semitic, say Jewish, Semitic, this is the one point where you and I agree. I don't think that saying Jewish is a reason to be upset. Well, it's what if ridiculous. she said black? Uh, then you're supposed to Those fire a black and burn it at the stake. No, oh, you know, right? you know this country's a little Who cares if she's anti-Semitic anyway? I mean, she, she, she's working in real estate in New York City. It's not like she's ever going to come into contact with anybody Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> but don't you think it's, it really is the beginning of the end? It's like yeah. last week we were talking about somebody, uh, politicians described somebody as a nice lady, and they said, well, it's the way it was said was condescending. He shouldn't be saying that. No, I said, I think you can. I just think that she probably, it was probably like fat old Jewish ladies that worked with her that got mad about it, that even said something. But I'm <laughs> saying everybody was outraged. The papers were like, she's racist. Everybody's like, oh, my God, I can't you believe she what? said somebody's religion. They are really taking the fun out of the world, because I want to point out That's stuff right. like, you know, Norton's liver spots on his head, um, Geraldo's Buster Poindexter hairdo. I want to point these things out without yeah. having to have a Can problem. Can we point out the it. fact that you're a black guy dressed like a Beverly Hills rich kid? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back after this. Event. There's a report in a London newspaper that another Paris Hilton sex tape is about to surface. This one features Paris having sex with two boyfriends separately, one of which is Nick Carter. First of all, I love the beginning of the story. In a London newspaper, a Paris Hilton, uh, Amsterdam, uh, billiards, I don't know. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was trying to be clever. What do you think about the uh, Paris Hilton thing, the new tape? I think the first tape is an accident. The second one's like an audition tape. Like, now it's like a plea to, for, to the porn industry that she wants. Like, what is, how does that accidentally happen twice? I'll tell you what it is. It's her doing exactly what she should be doing in show business. <laughs> Did they, didn't they steal it from her though? Didn't they steal it out of her house or something? Like, doesn't she have security? I'm, I'm just, I'm curious. Why are we so fascinated by rich white whores? What is that all about? <laughs> But, oh, it, it, these tapes are always, they're always stolen out of people. When's the last time someone stole a tape from your house? <laughs> people and break how, in stealing tapes. Did you hide your know, sex tapes? It, well, you know what? I hide them, but you notice every time there's one of these sex tapes surfaces, it's, it was always like Rob Lowe and uh, Tommy Lee, R. Kelly, and everyone said, that, those guys had huge, huge penises, right? It's always the guys with like the huge penises with the hot chicks that seem to be not so careful with their it's porno collection. Right? <laughs> you know? It's never some little guy yeah. crying. Yeah, right. if you have an average size penis, let's say, theoretically, you keep your <laughs> pretty well hidden. <laughs> Plus, don't you think that after the first one came out, if she was that traumatized, she would have burned the second one. She wouldn't be having it in her house. <laughs> I also think that the company, the no. family, should use this for advertising. How perfect would that be? Hilton Hotels, we have Luxor... Shark. Lu <laughs> 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 was the halfway through, he got so <laughs> self-conscious that he was doing an actual, like, that bit. So uh, uh, and he knew we were he all looking at him with hate, as all comedians look at another comedian when they try. <laughs> So that's why he stumbled. What, but go what, ahead. What, I want to hear about the slogan. I'll tell you what I was what gonna... happened to the segment where you replaced the f up? What, what happened to that? Wait. I have, we're going to get to that. I had, I had a, a slogan I was going to say. that. What was the slogan for the Hilton Hotels that you changed? Yes, liver Try not to spill your tea. Hilton Hotels. We have luxurious rooms and our daughter has sucked a c*** in every one of them. <laughs> You were really hoping that would bomb, weren't you? It did bomb in my eyes. And, I, and can you because say? You said the C word, exactly. Can you say oh, Hilton Hotels? It will sound edgy. Uh, 
The article in Details magazine focuses on the new trend of straight guys masturbating in public places. Oh my goodness. The guys who answered the survey admit to rubbing one out in saunas in the gym, in cars, even walking down the street. You now, notice those are white legs, right? You know. <laughs> Those are white legs. It's true. You, one thing about black guys, you never see them touch their private parts in public. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, sweetheart, what's up, Goldilocks? Yo, how you doing? <laughs> That's Can what I told you the black girls. Yo, Goldilocks. What's that? Can you masturbate while walking down Let's the street? Let's ask the expert, Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> first of all, I like the fact that we live in a country where, like, half the people are worried about the government looking at our computers, and the other half want to jerk off on the city hips. <laughs> what would their slogan be if the city? <laughs> uh, you know, they, uh, they're, they're saying it's a trend that more and more people are masturbating publicly. And there is, I guess there's two components. Of it. There are those, some people that masturbate in the open because they get a rush, the thrill that they might get caught. And then there's just like the average person who maybe like you're at the zoo and you see the monkeys going at it. It, it, put, it puts the thought in your head, you know. Yeah. Have you whacked off in public, you guys? Once. Oh, yeah. Once! <laughs> and how about you, Todd? Hell no, nah, I walk out in public and people think it's an eclipse. <laughs> Why didn't you ask me? What's that? I'm, I'm saving yeah. the best for last. You're you headline. don't think I'm asking you, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn, have you done that? Like in a... No, uh, like in a public bathroom, like in a stall? No, yeah. um, you already have to, as a girl, you have to crouch over the toilet anyway, so uh -huh. then if you masturbated, you'd fall in. How about on those little, like, quarter horsey things at the supermarket? <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> Chilling. <laughs> the imagery is very chilling. That combination of little kids at Walmart and this bass with a Sam's Club card and our man. Pumping quarters. Roll of quarters and a good natured smile. <laughs> Come on, it's not a sin. Oh. Well, I think it's an outrage, but I've whacked one, uh, you know. In public places? Well, semi-public. Yeah. Those like, actually where? look like your legs right there, Colin. I wish my legs were... Those are nice legs compared to my awful Yeah, but I legs. read that article that said that, that guys are whacking off now in saunas. Like, yeah, if, you guys, if you went into the sauna no. and there was a guy in there, like, all these guys were sitting there looking at you. Of course you wouldn't, would you? unless you're looking for something. Yeah. yeah. That guy in the article goes, it's not a gay thing. Sure. Really? <laughs> yes, pretty, it well, is. Well, sauna. pretty much, straight guys have abandoned the sauna world years ago. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you know, and you don't, step, you don't you, step foot in a sauna. If you yeah. step foot in a sauna, you deserve to well, see whatever the hell's going on. you step in, you just kind of stand. If you sit, you don't sit down. You're just like, yeah, all right. And then you get out. And and what? You no, couldn't I, have a bunch of black guys, uh, you know, whacking off in the sun. There wouldn't be more than enough room, but maybe two. <laughs> it's I, funny, but you already did that one. Yeah. I am. Um, <laughs> yeah. Wait. It'd be like, you, you, you like an that? eclipse from the sauna. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, the one, the one, one time I was, this is true, I did a gig with uh, Florentine and Bob Levy in uh, Connecticut. It was my first gigs in comedy. And a girl rubbed my leg under the table and I'd never gotten any comedy sex. And um, I'll eat it. And um, I was so horny. On the way back, I started whacking my bag in the back seat of Jim's car while he was driving. Ew, 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 it ew. wasn't a gay thing at all, though. And he screamed at me. He's like, stop doing that. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I just got carried away. In his car, you were doing We'll be right back. back. Yeah. <laughs> Size Me Up is where we bring out two of our audience members and our comics are going to have to guess where they're from, what they do, and then give an interesting fact about them. Let's bring our first person out. Okay, this is Tracy. Panel, you have 20 seconds to size her up. Trace, over here. Jim <laughs> <laughs> just let one fly. You hear that? Oh, I miss it. Thank God, the worst one's gone. It's like... It's like Hurricane Jean. The worst one didn't hit the way we thought it was. <laughs> okay, let's see what you got. Jim. Uh, I say she's from Seattle. Uh, her job is she's a groupie for Everclear. And an interesting fact is she stole Annette Funicello's wig. All right, Lynn. Um, okay. Quit stalling. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I say hometown is somewhere in Seattle. Um, did you see that too? You bet I did. Listening, listening. Okay, job, a Starbucks barista, interesting fact, plays drums in a girl band, and pees in the cappuccino. All right. Todd. Okay, I think she's from Holduck, Maine. She's a 24-hour laundromat attendant. And uh, interesting fact, she only dates guys with tooth decay. <laughs> Great. Uh, hometown is Kingston, Jamaica. <laughs> uh, 
your job, you, you go to beauty school, and an interesting fact is you have tiny antlers on your vagina. <laughs> oh, crazy. Little, 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 crazy, tiny. what's the real answer? Okay, I'm Tracy Morford from Syracuse. I'm a student, and I'm a photographer. Oh, oh very good. Boy. Thank you, Tracy. Okay. Thank you, babe. Okay, next. We have Peter and Anthony. Boys, let's try this again. Let's put 20 seconds on the clock for Peter and Anthony. What's up, boys? What's going on, man? How you doing? Oh, he wants you to move in a little closer. I guess this way. This way back? Here? I'm special. I know, don't touch it. All right. Let's see what you got. This time we're starting with Greg. Uh, you're, you're, uh, you're, you're, one of you is from Nevada and the other one is from California. <laughs> your, uh, your, uh, your job is that you, you work in a, in the niche industry, which is a giant twin gay porn. <laughs> and, uh, interesting, interesting fact is you actually share a penis. Todd! Um, I think they're from Topeka, Kansas. Um... They're professional lumberjacks, and um, actually they moonlight as stuntmen in gay pornos. <laughs> Lynn. Okay, a hometown somewhere dark and wet. Um, job, they work at a quick oil lube center. And interesting fact, their mother says they both are good kissers. Oh, Jim Norton. Um, they are originally from a giraffe balls. <laughs> Um, their job is they go to high schools and uh, reenact prison rapes. <laughs> and an interesting fact is that each one of them has a three-inch penis. Uh, guys, what's the truth? <laughs> We're from New Brunswick, New Jersey, and we both work in IT. And and I, <laughs> interesting my interesting fact is I scored, uh, I took third place in a Hogu Full Contact Taekwondo tournament. Oh my yeah, God. interesting fact. This is for the ladies. I wear a size 16 shoe. All right, there you go. Say. Thanks for your volunteers. We'll be right back. Thanks, boys. <laughs> Folks, Hollywood Madam Heidi Fleiss is opening a new brothel. That's a whorehouse because she claims it's her only area of expertise. If you were to start a business based on your own expertise, Tell us the name of the company and what you would do, and I wish you all the best of luck. <laughs> Lynn. My company would be called Shell of a Man. It would offer a unique dating service for women who are interested in finding men who have been beat down by former girlfriends or ex-wives. Shell of a Man would help you find someone with no expectations and no dreams of good sex or promising romance. Because that's all died with his last relationship. We're going to bring you a man with no self-esteem and no self-confidence. They've all been sucked out by the woman before you, leaving you with a mere male body. After all, that's all we really need, isn't it, girl? All right. Shell of a Man, Jim Norton. I'd call my company How to Have a Successful Comedy Show on TV in This Day and Age. Uh, the first rule is to be completely predictable in your political opinions. Bush is dumb, France and Germany are fine countries, and any war fought east of Poughkeepsie just has to be about oil. And don't forget rule number two. Never talk about race unless you're either a black, uh, black and proud or white and guilt-ridden. And most important, rule number three, which states that if you ignore uh, rules one and two, no matter how funny you are, don't expect people in show business to support you, especially since most of them embody the revolting, politically correct ideology you've been attacking all along. Remember, folks, it's only censorship if it's being done by a Republican. <laughs> Whoa! All right, <laughs> Todd Lynn. Okay, let's see. Um, I'm a very mean looking black man uh, who can curse <laughs> extremely well. So I'd probably try and capitalize on this by running a full service cuss out company <laughs> because I'm real good at cursing people out. I mean, real good. I mean, my service would be called Kiss My Big Black Ass, okay? <laughs> this would be for people either too afraid to do it or too afraid of the ramifications. With my service, you would get the intimidation <laughs> and a verbal lashing without being directly involved. <laughs> All right. Greg Giraldo. Uh, my area of greatest expertise is impregnating my wife when we don't have the money or the space for another kid. <laughs> so, uh, my company would be called Oops. 
and it would be sort of a scared straight program to pre prevent teenage pregnancies. We just invite teenagers to spend some time in my house, and after a couple days of sleep deprivation, crying fits, and diaper changes, they'll never have sex again. <laughs> All right, that's the show. Good night. <laughs> Quick questions for you. At, uh, at one point in the show, Jim Norton messed up one of his jokes, and you seem to really take some great delight. No, in it. no, no. Why? No. Why do you take such delight in the failure of others? Um, because that's just how I always have been. You know, it's not genuinely considered to be a positive quality, but I feel good because it builds me up a little to see others fail. You know. You have a good answer for it. Uh huh. You know. Um, uh, you talked about Paris Hilton tonight. Uh, have you uh, yourself ever 